We will now discuss and demonstrate how to submit SCTE records in CalPEDS. There are two ways to submit CTE records in CalPEDS. First is your online maintenance where you can add one CTE record at a time. This is the slower process. The faster process is through batch file upload where you can submit multiple records at once. You may extract the file from your SIS or use the SCTE batch file template to build your file and then upload it to CalPads. However, since the SCTE is a replacement type file, the one benefit of using online maintenance is if you want to add or edit one record without the need to re resubmit your entire school or district's SCTE file. You may use this method, which is the online maintenance, especially when correcting a few remaining end of year one certification errors. Regardless of the chosen method of submission, CalPads will process the records the same way. Let's now discuss the SCTE batch file details. So the SCTE file is a replacement type file, wherein CalPads uses the replacement processing functionality with the records in this file. It uses the School of Attendance and Academic Year ID to determine if an existing file in CalPAS can be overwritten. Users are able to determine if records should be added, updated, deleted, or replaced when submitting the file. And then a file can be in the following format, comma separated value format or CSV, caret separated value format, extensible markup language XML format or your common Excel spreadsheet format or .xlsx. We will now demonstrate how to upload a SCTE batch file in CalPads. First, log into CalPads and on your left navigation section, click on Upload View Submissions and click on File Upload. Next, in the file upload page, look for the specific file type. And then you can type a job name, but this is optional. Now locate the file in your computer. Choose the file and click on open. The file is loaded and now you just have to click on upload files. Just remember, before submitting the SCTE, it is recommended that you submit the CRSC followed by the SCSC first. So click on upload files. Once you get the file upload successful notification, CalPads will then bring you to the view submission section where you can view the status of the file. As you can see, the file is now in queue. Just click on apply filters or refresh your browser until the status changes to ready for review or in review. So once the status changes to ready for review, you can now see that there are six records that pass, while five records have been rejected. To view the details of this, click on the View button on the left side. You can download a submission error report if you want, or you can just view the errors from here. So there are two sections here. You have your View Errors and Warnings, and another tab to view post pass records. The view errors and, and warnings should indicate the errors in the file. Some might be fatal errors or some might just be warnings. To view an error, you just click on open on one of those errors and it should identify the error in the file. Now assuming all records passed, or if you want to post the pass records in this file, you may do so by clicking on view post pass records. 
okay you have the option to display each record by clicking this and that would allow you to post individually each school or exclude each school that you want now if you click on post all this would post all records for all schools so i'll just click on post all So now the post request was successful and you now have a post requested status for this file. We will now show you how to manually add SCTE records through the online maintenance process. We recommend the use of online maintenance only if you are adding or correcting a handful of records. This is normally the way to go if you're only correcting certification errors related to SCTE reporting, or if you are just adding a handful of students you forgot to include during the batch file upload without risking the chance of deleting prior data that you've uploaded. Okay, so first go to the homepage of CalPads, click on online maintenance, click on student data, and then enter the SSID. and then click on search. Alternatively, if you know the SSID and have copied it, you can just copy the SSID and paste it under the student SSID search and then click on the green arrow. Okay. Once you click on search or click on the green arrow, it brings us to the student detail section. We currently have the student enrolled this year. And so we scroll down to the student career technical education container. Click on the arrow to expand this section of the student's detail record to show any existing SCTE records. As you can see, you have one existing SCTE record here. So if you want to add or make corrections to a record, you can just click on open to make corrections or add to add a new SCTE record that's different from the current record with the pathway of 102. So let's just try that right now. Click on add new record. And it brings up the CTE model, okay? Let's now discuss the key data elements required in a SCTE record. First, for the sake of simplicity and clarity, it is assumed that the student followed the CTE pathway order of classes, and we are reporting that the student completed the capstone course in this current academic year. So first, is the academic year ID, which reflects the current reporting period. Next is the school of attendance, which is the location of the student is enrolled in and where the student completed the class at. So this is at CC Training Berkeley High. So I locate CC Training Berkeley High here and select that. And then next is the CTE pathway code field which indicates a specific CT pathway the student has completed. So let's just say 100. And lastly, the CT pathway completion academic year which reflects the current reporting period. Okay. Again, you cannot report a CTE completed record in the current year for a student who completed the capstone course in a prior year. And so what does this mean? The CT pathway completion academic year should always equal the academic year period that you're reporting it in. So let's just try 2020. Click on validate. 
And then once validated and you don't have any errors, click on post. And that's how to add a record. Now, if you want to modify a record, you can always click on open and make the necessary modifications and then validate and post. Now let's discuss how to report a CTE completer again. So below are the elements that comprise the CTE completer data of a student. Again, we have the student in the same pathway, 111. As we mentioned earlier, the valid code combinations document indicate what specific state course code is appropriate to a pathway and what is the capstone course. So as you can see, this is the capstone course. When reporting a CTE completer, that student should be enrolled or should be reported with the CRSC and SCSC completion record associated to the correct state course code. So you report, you use this correct state course code 7212 for the CRSC, and then you report the same state course code for the SCSC. Now for the CTE course, since this student is a completer, then you report the pathway code 111 and you report the completion academic year. The completion academic year ID should be for the current academic year. You can use a different year or else you'll get a IVR or GER 7. Just a reminder, when you report a completer, you also report the capstone cost appropriate to that completer um, record in CalPEDS. Let's now discuss how CalPEDS determine non-CT completer participants. As previously mentioned, non-CT completer participants are identified through the CRSC and SESC records reported for them. Let me illustrate that with a snippet of the course group master combo document or the valid code combinations document. You see here a CTE pathway with its own set of designated CTE state course codes. You have an intro, concentrator, and capstone course. For CT pathway participants, these are students reported with an SCSE record in CTE courses designated as either an intro or concentrator course. They must have an SCSE record associated to these courses. For non CT pathway participants, these are students who just took a single CTE class as an elective and is not participating in any CTE pathway program associated with the class. It could be a class designated as an intro or concentrator. It could even be the capstone course. However, since the student is not in the CTE program, you must not submit an SCTE record for them, hence making them a non-completer participant. So for non-CT pathway participants, you just report the SCSE record reflective of the state course code associated to the SCSE record is associated to. Simply put, both CT pathway participants and non-CT pathway participants should only be reported with the CRSC and SCSC records.